Systems of Equations. In this video, we're going to solve systems of equations using the substitution method with me, Catherine. In this video, we're just going to solve systems of equations using the substitution method. What exactly is the substitution method? Well, the substitution method is exactly like it sounds. We're going to solve for a variable or a letter, substitute that expression into the second equation, solve for the second variable, and then substitute back into the equation to find the first variable. Yeah, that sounds pretty easy, right? <laughs> Let me show you how to do it. Solve the following system by the substitution method. Check the solutions. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to solve for a letter. That means we want to get y by itself or x by itself. In this case, we're super lucky because we have y equals 3x. So we've already solved for a variable. So let's write it. The next thing we're going to do is substitute that expression into the second equation. This is my second equation. It's the one that I didn't use. So let's write it out. What it means to substitute is y equals 3x. So I'm going to leave a blank space for y and I'm going to put 3x in for y. Why? Because y equals 3x. Now we're going to solve for the second variable. Basically, we're going to solve for the variable that's there, which is x in our case. So let's rewrite it. Makes it a little easier to see. I'm going to collect like terms first. So 5x plus 3x is 8x equals 32. I want to get x by itself, so I need to divide both sides by 8. That gives me x equals 4. Great! We're going to substitute back into the other equation to find the first variable. Well, actually, it really doesn't matter which one we substitute because we're going to end up with the same answer. I decided to use the second one, y equals 3x. Well, we know what x is. That's 4. So I put 4 in for x. 3 times 4 is 12, so y equals 12. So let's look at our possible answers. The system has a single solution. There are infinite many solutions, and if you remember from graphing, that means they are the same line, or the solution set is the empty set. That means when we graph them, they're parallel. Well, in this one, the system has a single solution, and it's 4, 12, the ordered pair. Remember, an ordered pair is always x, y. Now, you're probably thinking, well, what if I use the other equation? Well, let me show you. We have 5x plus y equals 32. x is 4, so I'm going to put 4 in for x. 5 times 4 is 20. Now I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. That gives me y equals 12. That means it doesn't matter which equation you use to find the second variable. Let's look at another example. Solve the following system by the substitution method. First thing we have to do is look for a variable by itself. We want to get y equals or x equals. The hint tells us to look for a letter without a coefficient or a number in front of it. So if I look here, this is a really good candidate. But for this one, to solve for y, I'm going to have to subtract 5x from both sides and then divide by negative 1. That's a lot of work. If I look at the first equation, all I have to do to get y by itself is to divide everything by 4. That is so much easier. So we're going to do that first. 4y equals 20x plus 12. I want to get y by itself. So all I have to do is divide everything by 4. That gives us y equals 5x plus 3. Yay! We solve for a variable. Y is by itself. The next thing we have to do is substitute that expression into the second equation. Here's my second equation, so I'm going to rewrite it. Now this time, I'm going to leave a big space where the y is, because y equals 5x plus 3. So I'm going to put that right in there. And let's rewrite it. Now we're going to solve for x. This is going to take some algebra, and hopefully you notice that we are going to distribute. The 5x is outside of the parentheses, so we're going to bring that down. I'm going to take negative 1 times 5x, which is negative 5x. Then I'm going to take negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3, and then write the rest of it. Next, I'm going to collect like terms. 
5x minus 5x is 0x. And then I rewrote it. Well, 0x, that doesn't quite work, does it? But let's keep going. Next, I want to get 0x by itself. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That says 0x equals 0. Now let's think about this. 0x equals 0. Is that ever going to be true? Actually, yeah. It's going to be true every time. So let's look at our possible answers. Is it the system has a single solution? Nope, because we didn't find an x equal and a y equal. We didn't find an ordered pair. There are infinitely many solutions? Actually, yeah, because when we have 0x equals 0, is true every time. So let's review for a second. Infinite solutions means they're the same line. And no solutions means that they are parallel lines. Infinite solutions mean they have the exact same equation. Parallel lines mean they have the same slope, not the same y-intercept. So let's look at these equations again. The first one I solved for y, so we have y equals 5x plus 3. Let's solve the second one for y and see what we get. 5x minus y equals negative 3. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Then I have to divide everything by negative 1. That gives us y equals 5x plus 3. Do you notice it now? Yeah, they're actually the same equation. Anytime you have 0x equals to 0, that tells us that there are infinite solutions because they're the same line. And Math Excel and my math lab like to put this extra little piece in there. All it says is that for the variables x and y such that 5x minus y equals negative 3. It's just saying that you have infinitely many solutions. Let's look at another one. Solve the system of equations using the substitution method. First thing we have to do is solve for a letter. Now the hint tells us to look for a letter without a coefficient or a number in front of it. Right away I see this guy. This is 1x. So this is the best candidate to solve for and that's what I'm going to do. To get x by itself, I'm going to subtract 5y from both sides. That gives me x equals negative 5y plus 34. Next, I have to back substitute that expression into the second equation. Here's my second equation. Since I solve for x, I need to make a big space for the x. Let's substitute. Now, I'm going to rewrite it. In this case, we're going to solve for y. Hopefully, you see the first thing I have to do is distribute. 2 times negative 5y is negative 10y. 2 times 34 is 68. And then rewrite the rest of it. Next, I'm going to put like terms next to each other. You don't necessarily have to do this step, but I think it really makes it easy for us. The next step is to collect like terms. So negative 10y plus 5y is negative 5y. And then I rewrote the rest. The next step is to get negative 5y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 68 from both sides of the equation. That gives me negative 5y equals negative 30. Now I need to get y by itself. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. This gives me y equals 6. Whew! Now what we're going to do is substitute that y back into either one of the equations to solve for x. For this one, I decided to take the second equation. We could have done the first one, it really doesn't matter. Next, I'm going to put 6 in for y. 5 times 6 is 30. I need to get 2x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides. This gives us 2x equals 8. Next, I need to get x by itself. The opposite of multiplying is dividing, so I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. This gives us x equals 4. Cool! So now let's look at our possible answers. Is it A, no solution? No, because we have an x and a y. Is it B, x is 5 and y is 4? No, because we found x is 4 and y is 6. So that turns out to be C. Perfect! Let's look at another one. Solve the system of equations using the substitution method. The first thing we're going to do is solve for a letter. Well, when I look at these, I don't have a 1x or a 1y. 
but it looks like the easiest thing to do would be to solve for y, because 6 divides by 2, and negative 12 divides by negative 4. So at this point, it doesn't matter which one. I decided to do the first one. In this case, it's going to be easier to solve for y, because 6 divides by 2. I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides, and then I'm going to divide by 2. That gives me y equals negative 3x. Now, I'm going to take the second equation and substitute that expression into it. I'm taking this equation, and now I'm going to leave a big spot for the y, because negative 3x goes in for y. Let's rewrite it, all right? And now I have to solve for x. But the first thing is I have to multiply negative 4 times negative 3. That gives me negative 12x plus 12x, which is 0x. Now I have 0x equals 0. Do you remember what that is? Well, let's look at our solutions. It's definitely not 0, 8 because we didn't get an x and a y. Infinite solutions mean they have the same line, and no solution means they're parallel lines. Infinite solutions have the exact same equation, and parallel lines have the same slope but not the same y-intercept. So let's figure this one out. We have y equals negative 3x. Now we're going to solve for y again. I'm trying to get y equals mx plus b. The first thing I'm going to do is add 12x to both sides and then divide by negative 4. And then you can see we get y equals negative 3x. Do you notice something? Yeah, they're the same line. That means we're going to have infinite solutions. Let's review for a second. These two are parallel lines. I know that because they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. These are the exact same line because, well, they're exactly the same. Parallel lines have no solution because, well, they never intersect. If you have the same line, they have infinite solutions because they're the same line. Here's the self-quiz. You're going to pause the video, use the substitution method to find the correct answer, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. The first thing we have to do is solve for an x or a y. Let's look at the first equation. I have a 1x and a 1y, and in the second equation, I have a 1x and a negative 1y. Our best bet is to solve for one of these. It really doesn't matter which one. I decided to take the first equation and solve for y. So I subtract x from both sides, and I end up with y equals negative x plus 7. Great. Now I have to back substitute. I'm going to take the second equation, I'm going to leave a big spot for my y, and I'm going to put negative x plus 7 in there, because we figured out that y equals negative x plus 7. I'm going to rewrite it, and now I have to solve for x. Hopefully you see the first thing I have to do is the distributive property. Well, the x is not part of the distributive property, but now I'm going to take negative 1 times negative x, which is plus x. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7, and then we rewrite the rest. I'm going to collect like terms, so x plus x is 2x, and I rewrite the rest. I want to get 2x by itself, so I'm going to add 7 to both sides, which gives me 2x equals 2. Now, I really need to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide 2 on both sides. So it turns out that x is 1. Now we need to find y, so I'm going to back substitute into either of the equations. It really doesn't matter. I decided to do the first one again. Since x is 1, I'm going to put 1 in for x. Now I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to have to subtract that 1 on both sides. That gives me y equals 6. Let's look at our possible solutions. It's definitely not a no solution because these are not parallel lines. It's not going to be b because we end up with x equals 1 and y equals 6. Hopefully you got c, the order pair 1, 6. Let's do another self-quiz. You're going to pause the video, use the substitution method, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. The first thing we have to do is solve for a letter. When I look at my equations, the easiest one to solve for is the one that has 1 in front of it. So I'm going to solve for this x. To do that, I need to subtract 3y from both sides of the equation. That gives me x equals negative 3y minus 3. You'll see that I have x by itself. Now, I'm going to take the second equation. This time, I'm going to substitute negative 3y minus 3 in for x. 
So I put a big space for the X. And there we go. It's kind of handy to rewrite it. Next, I need to use the distributive property. So I'm going to take negative 2 times negative 3y, which is 6y. Then negative 2 times negative 3, which is 6. And then just rewrite the rest of it. Next, I have to collect like terms. Well, 6y plus 4y is 10y. Now, I have to get 10y by itself. That means I have to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. This gives me 10y equals 0. To get y by itself, I have to divide by 10. Yeah, this gives me y equals 0. The next step is to find x. It doesn't matter which equation you use, but I decided to use the first one. Now, I'm going to rewrite it, but this time I'm putting 0 in for y. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, so that gives me x equals negative 3. Let's look at our possible answers. It could be a, negative 3, 6. Well, x is negative 3, but y is not 6. Yup, it's b. x is negative 3, and y is 0. Let's try the last self quiz. I'm going to pause the video. Use the substitution method to find the correct answer, then press play to check. Don't freak out that you have a fraction. It's okay. Let's see how you did. So the first thing that we have to do is solve for a variable. Well, we're pretty lucky here because we have one that's already solved. y equals 1 half x plus 3. So the next step is to substitute into the second equation. Well, we know that y equals 1 half x plus 3. So what I'm going to do, instead of writing y, I'm going to put 1 half x plus 3. And then let's rewrite it. Yeah, I like to rewrite everything. The next step then is to solve for x. We're going to use the distributive property. 2 times a half x is x. 2 times 3 is 6. And then we rewrite everything else. The next thing that I like to do is put the like terms together. So I have x minus x plus 6 equals 8 x minus x is actually 0x. At this point, we could probably guess what our answer is, but let's keep going because I know when you're on a test, you get really nervous and you just keep going, right? So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So 0x equals 2. Well, let's think about this. Will this ever be true? Will 0 ever equal 2? No. So let's look at our possible answers. It's actually A, the empty set. We didn't even have to go very far because 0x will never equal 2. Yay! Now you're ready to practice, practice, practice! If you'd like to pin me to Pinterest, do it! Make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss another exciting episode! Thank you!